So when I had Jeremy on, he was very excited to talk about the engineering aspects of Cosmic. You know, he, he is very much a fan of Rust, uh, as you can tell from his Rust operating system that he started during the Rust beta. Um, <laughs> but from yeah. the business perspective, why did you guys want to do a whole desktop environment? Like, what was GNOME not offering or... Was it the direction that Gnome's going? Was it just wanting the stability of having something yourself? Why, why go for Cosmic? Why, why do this? Well, um, there's two two main reasons. Uh, first, um, when we when we develop our Cosmic UX, which mm -hmm. is you know essentially what our um, uh, extensions on top of uh, on top of Gnome, mm -hmm. um, you know, Pop Shell and uh, and uh, what else? Um, uh, and uh, the other extensions that we, we used to put together, the UX, the launcher, the dock, um, it's the application library, it's auto tiling, all those together was, that's the user experience that we wanted to um, develop for our customers that in our, in our research and our user testing um, was, a, um, was a great, was a better experience for our customers. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and the response to it was really, was overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive. Um, uh, especially the launcher and auto tiling, they were, mm -hmm. um, they became, um, uh, once you get used to using them regularly, it's really, it's, it's, it's similar to other things. It's hard to like alt tab is terrible to try to get to an app, but if you can just type the name mm -hmm. and then switch to it, it is, um, a lot faster and a lot easier. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, uh, and so. So the response to the UX work that we did in, in GNOME was positive. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, GNOME, GNOME wasn't uh, very interested in the direction we were we were taking. You know, they have their their own uh, design ideas, and mm -hmm. that's of course uh, you know perfectly fine. A project should should uh, you know should go after its you know its its uh, philosophy, its design ethos. Sure. Uh, ours was different, and so we were we had a choice of between. Uh, uh, every six month, every six months, adapting GNOME to our UX, mm -hmm. which means all of our engineering cycles are used just making the same thing and maybe adding some features here or there. But that's a lot of engineering time and cycles just adapting something that can break out of underneath us and you know isn't particularly sound for what we're trying to do anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, or we could go build a desktop environment. Mm -hmm. It seemed like very, very stark differences because one is relatively small, one is absolutely massive. But if we wanted to continue adding value as much as we possibly can to the user experience, add value to the ecosystem of open source, um, it wasn't going to be adapting GNOME every six months. It was going to be going out and building Cosmic. Mm -hmm. The second reason that um, we decided we wanted to build Cosmic because we, we thought it'd be really interesting to build a Linux desktop environment platform that people can use to build customer experiences with. Okay. So Cosmic will be the flagship experience on Pop! OS, mm -hmm. but it is designed and architected so that people can take Cosmic and create their own user experience. Mm -hmm. So if you... Um, uh, in our testing with our users, um, you know, we like really powerful little applets that can do lots of different things. <clears throat> we like the launcher. Um, uh, we like the, uh, like the tiling features and the app library and a dock. Um, maybe your users don't need that at all. Maybe Manjaro's users need something completely different. <laughs> and uh, a quick list menu would be better. So you can just remove our applets, put your own applet in, change our app library, however you'd like to change it, uh, change the orientation of the dock, um, and um, uh, change what opens when you hit the super key. You can do all of this and all of the groundwork that makes that really hard to do in um, other in a lot of desktop environments is already done for you. It's mm -hmm. mostly changing configuration files to set it up the way you'd like, and maybe writing an, a couple of applets so the user experience is a little different for for your users. Mm -hmm. um, I like we had talked about a little bit earlier. I think the the um, uh, the ecosystem in open source is really really healthy and creative and quite incredible. And so, so the idea with the 
you know, the second reason, the idea with Cosmic is to enable that ecosystem to do really creative things and just take it and do what they, what, you know, I just, um, and do what's right for their users or, or experiment with it and, and um, see what, um, what kind of user experiences they might build, whether it's a distribution or um, it could be, um, or it could be a different device. It could be a tablet. It could be um, uh, it could be a, a exercise bike for a company that's developing something. This gives the, this gives the world a platform to take, and it's architected to adapt to the experience that you want to build. Mm -hmm. So, one thing that's really curious about Cosmic is most Linux desktops are GNOME, uh, uh, GTK, or Qt. You guys are going a whole different direction. It's obviously it's all Rust based. You've got you're using the Iced toolkit. You're using this Smithy library to build the compositor. How did these discussions go? Where uh, was it the engineers who were like, "Hey, let's let's." I, <clears throat> I'm sure people like Jeremy were a big part of this. Who obviously I I, I can see I can see the Rust influence there. So. How did those discussions go? Were there any concerns about going in this direction of realistically like a fairly untested toolkits in the general Linux desktop space? I, I just want to know what happened there. Like how, how did, how? <laughs> it's not for lack of trying everything else first. Mm. So um, we, we look very closely at, GTK and uh, the compositor was an important because as for, with our experience with hardware developing a, a compositor was very important to us. The compositor has a huge impact on the mm -hmm. experience uh, for a desk uh, um, in a in a desktop or an op in an operating system, and so um, we uh, so that was that was a early indication that this is going to be a bigger project was that if we want to really do what we want to do mm -hmm. we're going to have to write a, a, a compositor and, we're, and that's so um we we consider gtk um uh, but what we really wanted to do was build a pure rust platform uh, like you like you say a lot of the the um, ui um and uh, just the gui ecosystem around rust especially so it's been almost two years mm -hmm. since we've been developing this, especially two years ago. was was very, very early. Didn't even exist. Shit. You guys uh, are basically no... the driving force behind the GUI Rust stuff. <laughs> right. Um, but that's also been awesome because <laughs> um, we've we've been like an early entrance to this um, uh, growing ecosystem of Rust development, Rust GUI development. Uh, we've been able to contribute key parts to it mm -hmm. that are used across what is now this is growing ecosystem. Uh, text rendering is, I think, the standard is the standard is just cosmic text because that's, that's what we wrote. It, it works really well, and so mm -hmm. now that's what what people use. Uh, um, and I think that's really cool to be a part of. Um, there's obviously they've made the project a lot larger. We had to build Cosmic Toolkit. Uh, we had to build all of our own widgets. We had to. Uh, we have to work on accessibility. Um, uh, and, you know, fortunately, it's a great project. It's an access kit that mm. was uh, pretty well along um, that we could integrate into ICE. So there's a, um, I think there's a great community building um, the GUI ecosystem for Rust, and it's just a fun part to be on. Mm -hmm. How many people do you have working on Cosmic? Uh, uh, seven. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, it's it's not really that many people realistically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um you'd be amazed with uh, I don't know how big the first Android team is, but I don't think it's much bigger than that. Okay, that's fair. It's that's 10, fair. 20 or something. Um uh and I think Android took 3 year, 2 3 years something like that too. Um bigger projects for sure, mm -hmm. but might have been twenty people, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, sometimes surprising what a small group can really accomplish with a lot of people that are kind of insane. <laughs> I know that there was the blog post that came out recently saying that the alpha probably is going to happen in a couple of months. 
I I don't think don't do not say dates because people will hold you to it. I've told people this before. I I told the budgie developer this. Stop saying when <laughs> things are gonna happen because it's not gonna happen then. But is the project on track? Is what I want to ask. I I disagree a little bit. Okay. I think I think you need to have a date. Mm-hmm. To help your focus. I think it's important to have dates internally. You just don't need to tell people those dates. Well, if you don't tell people externally, then it's a lot easier to break. (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. (laughs) So, so, um, so, uh, so in short, yes, I, I, I feel like we're on target. Um, I, we're going to be very close to finishing all alpha features at the end of this month. Okay. That means we have two months of polish and bug fixes, mm-hmm. which I think for a project this size is is a nice amount of time um, to get there. Um, of course, we're going to need rebase under um, 2404 and do some distro work and installer work, things like that as well. Um, we might be, I don't know, there might be a two to four week window on either side, probably on the latter side. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's more realistic, but. Um, but I think that's a I think it's a good target for us. It's so, by the end of end of March, early April ish. So is the plan to have the alpha with the next version of Popos? Is that how it's gonna go? Uh, that's the alpha will be the next well, the alpha of cosmic will come along with the alpha of uh, Pop OS, yes. Okay. That's exciting. That that's really exciting. Cause right. I, I've been following this project for quite a bit at this point, and you know, early on, it was like, you know, a lot of mock-ups and, you know, cool ideas there. But to see it actually coming together and being something that's, you know, actually... I know there's been people trying out some pre-alpha stuff, and it's been in a relatively good state. Obviously, I've said this to the KDE guys as well. You can do however long of an alpha that you want, but the second that you give it to the general public that's when you're going to realize there is a lot of cases that you didn't test. There's some weird hardware configurations. People have got some yeah. weird input devices that you just never considered. Or there's just like use cases and interactions that just didn't come up during that early testing. And I wish you guys the best, but I I guarantee there's going to be some some rough edges there that were just never spotted. <laughs> 